Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily, where we strive to bring you a more complete understanding of what's driving the global automotive industry. Coming up later in the show, I will explain why automakers should never claim that their electric cars are zero emission vehicles. But first, let's get to the news. Luxury SUVs have been popular over the last few years, so it should be no surprise that Bentley announced it's going to be building its own model. The company says that it will be the most luxurious and powerful SUV on the market. It also says the styling will set it apart from any other SUV on the road. But we sure hope it doesn't look too much like the EXP9F concept, which was harshly criticized when it was unveiled. Sales of the SUV will begin in 2016 at Bentley's plant in Crewe, England. And according to previous comments by company executives, it should have a starting cost of around $240,000. Former General Motors executive Mark Hogan, who's now the only non-Japanese person to sit on the board of directors at Toyota, is going to help the company grow its sales in South America. Back in the 1990s, Hogan ran GM do Brasil when it made boatloads of profits, so he has a clear understanding of that market. Brazil is a substantial market, with sales of 3.4 million cars, trucks, and buses a year. Fiat, Volkswagen, and GM dominate that market, but Toyota does rather poorly there, trailing companies such as the Hyundai Group, Peugeot, and Honda. Another former GM executive, Steve St. Angelo, was appointed to Toyota South American operations in April of this year. Hogan and St. Angelo will be working hand in hand to build Toyota sales there. To help with the launch of 20 new or refreshed vehicles this year in the U.S., General Motors is bringing back some retirees to make sure everything goes smoothly. According to the Detroit News, the company has brought back around 25 employees on temporary contracts who have experience in engineering and manufacturing quality to work with suppliers. The move seems to be paying off. Mark Royce, the head of GM North America, said the Impala launch was the best that they've had in a while. I think this is a very astute move because those retirees have so much institutional knowledge of what it takes to launch a new car. Toyota is set to begin public tests in Japan with something it calls a personal mobility robot. But you can think of it as the company's version of a Segway called the Winglet. It has a top speed of just under four miles an hour, and it's designed to make getting around easier and more fun. The Winglet will be tested on sidewalks to see how well it performs with pedestrians and other traffic. The tests are scheduled to run through March of 2016. As fuel economy standards ramp up, it seems with each new vehicle launch, another gear or two gets added to the transmission. Mercedes-Benz is no exception. The company slipped a new 9-speed automatic into the E350 Bluetech for the European market that replaces a 7-speed unit. But the question that's always raised is if it's worth the fuel savings to add complexity to an already expensive part. Well, in the case of the E350 Bluetech, it may well be. Overall, MPGs were incre increased by a mile and a half per gallon to nearly 44.5 MPGs with no effect on its 0 to 60 time. Coming up after the break, I'll explain why it's very misleading for automakers to claim that their EVs are zero emission vehicles. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. Electric cars have an important role to play in the automotive industry, but they're not as environmentally clean as some would have you believe. It all has to do with how EVs are manufactured and recycled, as well as how the electricity that they use gets generated. A recent report commissioned by the EPA on the life cycle analysis of lithium-ion batteries finds that they can lead to, and I quote here, 
resource depletion, global warming, ecological toxicity, and human health impacts. Wow! It goes on to say that the nickel and cobalt cathodes used in Lyon batteries, and I quote again, may cause adverse respiratory, pulmonary, and neurological effects in those exposed. You know, that don't sound very green to me. Another EV study published in the Journal of Industrial Ecology by Yale University says that depending on how many kilometers an EV is driven and where it gets its electricity means that its carbon footprint of many EVs may be, and I quote again from the report, indistinguishable from those of a diesel vehicle. If the electricity that goes into those batteries is generated from coal, EVs can be surprisingly dirty. In Germany, which relies heavily on coal, an EV will generate between 110 and 120 grams of CO2. Ironically, the European Union wants gasoline and diesel cars to achieve 95 grams by 2020. So in Germany, EVs cannot meet the CO2 standard. The key to these two studies is that they look at the life cycle energy use of electric vehicles. That means they calculate all the energy needed to manufacture these cars, the amount and sources of energy they use in operation, and then the energy needed to recycle them. And that tells a completely different story. Let's get one thing straight here. I love driving electric vehicles. I love the throttle response and the driving experience. I especially love how they reduce noise pollution. I would really like to see them be successful. But let's be honest about them. Automakers should not be claiming that they are zero emission vehicles because that is completely misleading. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching and please join us again tomorrow.